Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. In this question, we're given a graph showing two functions being plotted. So we've got a generic y is equal to fx, and then a y is equal to gx. Then we're told to define a new function hx, which is the composite of the two. So it's f of g of x. And then we're asked how many stationary points does this new function h of x have between x being between 1 and 5. So to help, I've um, drawn up a, a version of the diagram here. It's uh, probably not perfect, but it's probably close enough to kind of get what we need to get. Um, so as the question said, we've got this new function h of x, which is the composite of f g of x. And we're told that we're really concerned between x being between um, 1 and 5. And we're looking for the stationary points. Now, for a question like this where we're dealing with composite functions, um, at first glance it can be um, seemingly daunting because we're not given the function. So how can we work out the composite? And really the technique you need to use is to use the charts to kind of first work out g of x at a particular value of x and then take that g of x and see um, where f of x would fall at that value. And so given we're only concerned between x being between 1 and 5, if we can carry out this process for um, x being 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then plot h of x, we should then be able to visually inspect where the stationary points are and count them up. So really what, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate h when x is 1 and that's really going to be f of g of 1, h when x is 2 which is f of g of 2, h3 which is f g3, h4 which is f g4, and then h5 which is f g5. So if we can evaluate g1, g2, g3, g4, g5, whatever that result is, we evaluate f of that and then plot these points we should be able to then work out where the stationary points are. It won't be perfect because we don't have the exact functions. We're really just going to be inspecting the charts we have, but hopefully it gets close enough to get to the right answer. So if I start here with h1, f of g of 1 will be equal to f of well, whatever g of 1 is. So if I go x equals 1, what is this red curve g? It's 2. I mean it might not be exactly 2 but it's close enough to 2. So then I have to go well when x is 2 what is f of x? So when we go to 2 f of x is about 1 and a half and again that's just kind of it's about that based on inspection. Now if I repeat that process f of g of 2 at, at point 2 the red curve is about a half so at x is equal to half, f of x is t a touch under 2. I might just say 1.9. Um, when uh, x is equal to 3, we get f of g of 3. g of 3 is 0 pretty, pretty clearly. So f of 0 is, maybe I'll call that 1.7. Um, h of 4, so this will be f of when x is equal to 4, um, g of x is equal to half again. And notice this is a parabola, so what I've just done for 1 and 2, I'll really get the same outcome for 4 and 5 because the parabola is symmetrical, so that's not surprising to get the half. f of a half already worked out as 1.9, and then at x is equal to 5, g of 5 is going to be 2, 
f of 2 I already worked out is 1.5. So now maybe in a new color in green I'll plot each of these points. So at 1 I'll plot 1.5, at 2 I'll plot 1.9, at 3 I'll plot 1.7, so just kind of between 1.5 and 1.9. At 4 I'll plot 1.9 again. And at 5 I'll come back to 1.5. So if I connect those, Stationary points are those points where the tangent becomes zero, so basically where we're turning around. We can see that that happens three times in this range because from point one to point two we're going up, we're going up here to get to those two points, then we're coming down, then we're going up again, and then we're coming down. So by my calculation that gives us three stationary points. And uh, that's kind of all there is to that question. So uh, somewhat challenging in that we're not given the exact functions and we have to kind of visually inspect and do our best. But I think, um, at least in this example, uh, it's quite clear you can, you can kind of see those um, points. So whenever you're in a situation where you're dealing with composite functions and all you're given are the charts, you just need to follow this methodical step where you first evaluate the inside function and then use that result to say that's now the x value for the outside function and um, you just have to use the the charts to to work out each of those values. So hopefully that all made sense and you were able to follow along and uh, tick boom! <laughs>